Now stop me if you've heard this before, but Tesla just had a record-breaking quarter again. And I'm sorry, you'll probably hear me say that a few more times, delivering 343,000 vehicles, but more importantly, producing over 365,000 vehicles. Within a three-month block, that is unheard of in the EV industry and should absolutely be congratulated. Great work, Tesla, for producing as many vehicles as you have across four different factories stretching across three different continents and I'm more excited about this quarterly report than usual just because uh Tesla you're welcome a little bit all I can say is deliveries would be ever so slightly lower if it weren't for yours truly because we're actually recording today's video from inside of a vehicle that was delivered in the third quarter of 2022 so I know it's a very small amount it's a very insignificant impact on the total number but it still just feels cool to finally be able to say that yes simultaneously Tesla did announce that the the next earnings call will be on October 19th, which I'm looking forward to tuning in for as well. But also a lot of people are kind of curious as to why there's such a big gap between production and deliveries. A lot of people who don't know what they're talking about, assuming this means this is a demand problem. And I don't even have the time to explain to you as to why you're so wrong, but actually I do have time. So I'm going to go ahead and say why. First of all, if demand was legitimately a problem, we would see the effects of that by not having tons of people wondering where their cars are all the time because wait time times on Teslas are still typically between the wait of three to six months or sometimes longer depending on which model you want to buy. And as Tesla themselves said in this blog post, as production volumes continue to grow, it is becoming increasingly challenging to secure vehicle transportation capacity and at a reasonable cost during these peak logistics weeks. In Q3, we began transitioning to a more even regional mix of vehicle builds each week, which led to an increase in cards in transit at the end of the quarter. There's your answer, and I don't believe Tesla is lying about that because if they were having a hard time delivering cars to people there would be much shorter wait times and people would be getting their cars very quickly but i mean it is true that there has been a decrease in the wait time for tesla's vehicles particularly in china because giga shanghai has shut down temporarily to re-optimize their manufacturing processes and once they came back online with multiple shifts running and you know even paying employees extra to come in during the holidays that resulted in an increase of workflow so giga shanghai is building more vehicles than they've ever built before, which is Tesla's most productive factory, by the way. But also keep in mind, not only is Giga Shanghai serving the greater Asia market, it is also their main export hub. So most of the vehicles going to Japan, Australia, New Zealand, all of those countries are mostly getting vehicles from Giga Shanghai. So now that they've caught up on a lot of the demand in China, again, it's not like you can order one of these cars and get them in a week or two, but over in China, if you're ordering a Model 3 or Y, you no longer have to wait three to six months. Now it's being measured in weeks again, which ultimately, guys, that's a good thing. I think that we've had wait times with Tesla for so long that as soon as people find out that the wait times aren't six months, they assume, oh no, demand is dropping. There goes the demand. Tesla can't sell their cars anymore. No, it means that they can finally catch up on the market they're in and actually start addressing the markets they haven't launched in yet. So you'll notice there haven't really been any price cuts as well because Tesla doesn't have a demand issue. But as we're seeing, once they catch up on localized demand in Giga Shanghai, high, that's when you have more vehicles in transit because they're exporting them to different countries where Model Ys have not been delivered with extreme volume yet. And ultimately, even if there are price cuts, I find it funny that people find that as bad news or Tesla's in trouble if they're lowering prices. Like, the whole concept, the whole reason I love talking about production capacity so much on this channel is because that's the beauty of production capacity. If there is availability for electric vehicles, then affordability will follow because so many people want Teslas. That's that's why prices go up. It's a simple law of supply and demand. And once Tesla is able to build vehicles at extreme enough volume, that's when the wait times can decrease. And then ultimately prices can come down. And some bears are probably thinking, well, oh no, that means that Tesla is going to have lower margins. They're not going to be as profitable anymore if they sell these vehicles at a lower price. No, you idiot. It's because they're selling more now. If you're selling millions of cars with smaller profit margins, then you'll make the same amount or more than a few fewer number of cars with large profit margins. So it's not like Tesla's making less money if they do eventually end up lowering prices, which I believe they will. And I'm all for it, to be honest, because I love driving my vehicle. We drove it around for about an hour today and I had a lot of fun with it. And I understand that so many people out there are going to want to experience a car as awesome as this one too. And a lot of you just can't yet because they're too dang expensive. And I agree. I feel like I paid too much for this car a lot of the time. So as long as Tesla is able to scale up production and 
and increase availability of their vehicles, they'll be able to lower prices and bring this very safe, very enjoyable vehicle to more customers. And that's why I'm happy that there's more vehicles in transit because it means that more people are going to enjoy the same things I've enjoyed with my car. And it doesn't scare me that deliveries are slightly lower than production more so than usual because I know every single vehicle Tesla has built will be locked and probably already is locked to a customer and it just takes some time for those vehicles to officially be delivered. So congratulations, Tesla. Well done on another record quarter. And with the continued ramp up of Giga Berlin as well, special congratulations in order for them because they just recently hit 2,000 vehicles built within a week, which if you extrapolate that out, it means that Giga Berlin, even though it hasn't been online for a year yet, is at a run rate of over 100,000 vehicles per year. And I'm sure that's just going to increase as the quarter goes on because just three months ago, they were at a rate of 1,000 a week. So they've doubled within the span of a couple months, which is honestly kind of mind boggling and insane that they can do that. So if this trend continues, it's fairly likely we're going to be in the mid to high 400,000 vehicles produced next quarter. And then Tesla will be able to report again, their biggest year of all time. So I'm very excited for the earnings call. Looking forward to more people getting their cars. And I hope you guys are looking forward to it as well. Thank you to everyone supporting this channel over on Patreon. It seriously helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.